The other thing here to mention, even though these are, this is not per se specific to, this is clear, it's not per se specific to I format instructions alone, but they are important for I formatted instructions. This hardware component called the multiplexers, right? Or max, as for short, max. Um, so you notice that in the data path, you probably see there's a max here, there's a max here, a multiplexer here. So the question is, what is their role, right? It turns out that uh, as you're processing this, this 32 bit instruction, um, there are certain instances when you might want to explicitly decide on what decision needs to be made, right? So a, a nice way of thinking about this is um, a situation where you're dealing with uh, an R format instruction and an I format instruction that writes data to a register. Remember that for R format instructions, the bit segments that is res responsible for the register destination is this, right? 15 to 11. Hmm? 15 to 11. Opcode, opcode, RAS, RT, RD, shift amount, funk code, right? But if you're dealing with an I format instruction like add I, the register component that is responsible or that acts as a uh, storage location as a destination register is actually RT, the target register. You remember this, right? Opcode, RS, RD, RT. There's no RD. And so the, the question really is then, if, if you're performing some sort of like com computation, if you're making reference to the register file, how, how exactly does the register file get to know which of the registers is the destination? Is the classic example of where max uh, or multiplexes come in handy, right? Um, they help resolve those sort of um, ambiguities, right? <clears throat> so, um, Back to the same example, just to uh, showcase what actually happens here. Um, imagine a situation where you, you're dealing with an add instruction and an add I instruction. You know that for an add instruction, the destination register is going to be uh, bit segment 15 to 11, right? This. But for an add I instruction, the destination is going to be 20 to 16, this. This is where the marks comes in. Um, the, the multiplexer that actually sits between, um, between uh, uh, so these wires here and the register file determines exactly which input is supposed to go into the register file or which register should act as a destination register, right? So typically there's a, a control wire here which is appropriately named what? Uh, register destination. Uh, Register destination, yeah, register destination. And so depending on the value of register destination, um, the multiplexer gets to decide what, which one of these inputs is supposed to act as a, a destination register here. So in this case, if, if the register destination bit is a one, then the value that will serve as a destination register, a la RD, will be 15, will be represented by the bits 15 to 11. If the input value on the other hand coming into the register destination is a zero, then we know that this is, um, uh, then we know that this is an I formatted instruction, in which case the destination register will be 20 to 16 bits. Right, so you notice here a couple of things happening here. We are determining which of the bit segments are going in or are, are going to be used as input here, right? Depending on what the value of this control signal is, whether it's a one or a zero. And then the other important thing is that the input, the input to this multiplexer is um, a five bit value, right? Corresponding to either RD or RT. Right. I thought I'd mention that. But if you look at this other multiplexer that sits between the, the register file and the arithmetic logic unit, again, still making reference to the add instruction and the add I instruction, you realize that when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with um, an add instruction, both inputs are going to come through the 
are going to have to come through the, um, the, the register, right? Operand one will come through as, uh, as, as read data one, right? Operand two will be read data two. You remember this, right? What we're talking about here is this here. So if you're dealing with an add, add instruction, the, the values are gonna come through from, from here, right? But on the other hand, if you're dealing with an add i instruction, you realize that the, uh, the input comes from elsewhere. It's coming from the sign extent. If you have, uh, if you have this sort of uh, situation where this thing is going to be fed to the AL you are performing a mathematical operation, the first operand would be RT, RA, sorry. The second operand would be the immediate value which is coming in from the sign extent. Well, of course, it's already been normalized here. It's already 32 bits in size. If you're dealing with an add instruction, the value will come from uh, read data two. So obviously it makes sense that you, you need a way of trying to determine where that input, the second operand is coming from. So you need a multiplexer as well. Another classic example where a multiplexer comes in handy. And, and really, uh, if you read up, you notice that you have multiplexers in different components of, the, uh, um, of, of this data path and control um, logical diagram, right? In this case, we're just showing examples using these two things here to try and link to things that we've already discussed. Uh, so, um, but the control line that gets to determine whether, on, whether the input value, the second operand is gonna come through the sign extend or or the register file is the ALU source, right? Again, it's just a, a control line which signals whether the source uh, is coming in from a register or not. Right? So is it coming in from the immediate value, sign extent, or is it coming through from uh, register source number two, right? Another key takeaway point here, in, in this particular example, you notice that um, the input values are 32 bits in size here because of the type of data we are dealing with, right? For this particular multiplexer, these values that are going into the multiplexer are 32 bits in size. For this multiplexer, the values coming in are five bits in size. So take our point here is it depends on where exactly that multiplexer is sitting and the purpose of the multiplexer. In this case, we're trying to determine what register <clears throat> is going to act as a destination. And when we're dealing with registers, we, we are talking about five bits here, zero up to 31, right? In this case, we are dealing with actual data. When we're dealing with actual data, we're dealing with 32 bits here, right? Yes? It's not the name of the multiplexer, it's the name of the bit that gets to determine what, uh, or, uh, what the multiplexer is going to do. Because you see the, the multiplexer, these two maxes here, they take in two input values, either zero or one, right? If the, for this particular one, if the input value is zero, then, if the, sorry, if, if, the, if, the, um, if the input value is zero, then the value that's going to be output is related to this line here, which is this segment. If the input value coming in from here is a one, then the value that is going to be uh, uh, inputted into here is this, coming from here. When you come uh, to this particular max, if the value coming in to the ALU source is a one, then you know that you're dealing with the immediate value. If it says zero, then you're dealing with a register input, the value that's in the register. So the ALU source is not the name of the multiplexer, no. no they're all multiplexers, I guess, but it doesn't have a name. Just No, no, it's not like that. It's um, what best way to do this? It's it's like we're making it. It's like we're making a. <clears throat> it's not exactly the same, but it's I guess it's similar. It's like what we were doing when we were dealing with branches, right? 
we say the we We say you, you get to branch depending on whether the condition is true. In this case, in this case, we branch, we branch to the line associated with the zero if the value is zero. If the value coming into here is zero. There's a control line that comes here, guys. There's a value that comes here which will either be a zero or a one. And there's a value that comes through the, um, reaches the destination control signal which is either a zero or a one. If the value is zero, then take this route. If the value is one, then use this route. This is how it works. If the value is zero here, then you know that the so if the value coming through here, through the ALU source bit, the value can either be one or zero. If the value is, uh, is zero, then you know that the, um, the value that's going to be fed to the ALU has to come from the register file. If the value is a one, then you know that that value must come through the immediate value. That's how it works. I don't know if that makes sense, but hey, okay. Are we, are we on the same page? Mm -hmm. Even though we're not flipping the books here, but, uh, oh, we're flipping the slides. Are we on the same slide? Now, 